So Eric, you're the uh, maitre d' of restaurant Petrus here in the Island Shangri-La Hotel Hong Kong, which I understand has recently been voted one of the top five hotel restaurants in the world. That's correct. It's an extraordinary achievement. Well done. Yeah, well, I, mean, I think we, we work very hard to that goal, I think. An extraordinary view. Um, but I understand you've got an extraordinary uh, wine list and wine cellar here. Can you tell me about it? Um, yes, we have actually. We have. A, I think one of the uh, reasons why the restaurant is so well known is all partly due to the wine list. Uh, we have about 700 different wine on the uh, wine list, on the right? wine list uh, which represent about 10,000 bottle store within this hotel, okay. which is quite hard in, in Hong Kong because space is at value, so we have very little space. So. I've been very lucky to. I'm um, noticed also you've got, you've got all these wonderful cabinets around the room here with wine stored. And uh, does, that, does that have its own, does that I can hear yeah, its own cooling system? That's right, it has all uh, individually cooled. Uh, so the wine is kept at a temperature which is, you know, between 16 and 17. So being a hot country, you need to have that. That's a pretty special air conditioning system for wine. So we're going to taste four of your delicious yeah. wines here. Can I just have the wine menu? Because I understand the most expensive bottle of wine you have here is. Twenty thousand pounds. Just around that. Yeah, we actually sold two of those. Yeah. So well, I'll, I'll take a case back. Please. Then, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, today I think we'll try four different what we call uh, our horse wine right. uh, for Petrus. Uh, we tend to, to have, we have a lot of wine on the wine list, but we try to have wine by the glass because not everyone wants to drink a full bottle, especially especially with the drink I'm driving uh, low. So we have a good selection of, of a white wine, dry white wine to start two red on a sweet wine. So which one should we try first? I think we should try first the, uh, the Burgundy. Do you like the uh, oh. Show me that professional oh, pouring geez. technique. <laughs> this is a, a Macon Clézé uh, from Burgundy. Uh, quite lucky, it's got an old vintage for Macon Clézé, it's a 95. Mm, that's got a strong fruity aroma, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, indeed. A bit of age. Mm. That is that is quite a powerful white wine. Yeah. It's lovely. And that goes very well with And then it leaves a it's like dry after quite a strong dry aftertaste. Yeah, it's quite dry. Well. Yeah. Right, got good food, good balance. So which one is this? Uh, this is a, a Nuit Saint Georges Premier Cru. It's a, a monopole, so it's only made by that gentleman. Right. Uh, it's a ninety three red burgundy. Well that's, that's quite quite again, that's quite a subtle um Okay, isn't it? Mm, it's Pinot Noir, so quite, quite a light. Yeah, that is a very nice, light, nuggety taste. That's a great, uh, great. And again, yeah, not, not dry at all. It's very soft, isn't it? Very soft in the palate. Because the, the Asian palate tend to be, they don't like sour. Right. So we tend, when we select a horse wine or by the glass, we tend to find wine which fits more the Asian palate. So not too much young wine and um, often not too sour because they won't they won't drink it. Then we go for quite a contrast. This is a, a wine from the Rhone, so that, that will be ah. seriously powerful. Oh, Chateau of the Pape. Chateau of the Pape, uh, one of the best producers, Domaine de Telegraph. Um, no, I have drunk this before, actually. Yeah, but that's not for everyone's taste. You know, this is, has a, what, what we call that gamey, slightly horse meat flavor. So not everyone likes that, but well, there are different shots in yeah. but you'll find that that tend to be quite animal. Horsey flavour. Yeah, what I call be on camera, so I can't say the real world, but... Uh, <sighs> a real rider. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> that's, quite, that's, that's, that's quite a quite a dry mm. taste, isn't it? Yeah. You're also fruity. Uh, more, more, yeah. more, more on the, uh, what we call, uh, leather, mm. uh, slightly peppery. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is this, is this uh, popular with um, Hong Kong people? Less, but I try to change because you see, people tend to always drink the same thing. Yeah, so I choose one wine which is slightly different. Uh, and I'm a fanatic of run wines. So. But they're still <laughs> the most undervalued. For value for money, they're one of the best wines to, to, to drink. It's lovely. Uh, and then we can try a sweet wine which is uh, from the Loire Valley, which is a Cardochon. Again, not a huge production wine, uh, cut hard to get. Again, I'm not a great drinker of sweet um, but dessert wine. This one has very low, what we call sugar content. So it's sweet, but not syrupy. No. So without smellness, it's quite... It's 
got only on Pichi, but it's not. Yeah, yeah. No, it's unlike Sauterne and some of it's those. It's a fruit smell, isn't it? Tokai, it's, it's light in sugar. Actually, that's quite nice because that's that's not too syrupy, is it? It's not too. It's exactly. It's that's a more balanced can, sweet wine. We can drink two glasses with it. Often, when it's too syrupy, it's, you actually get tired of it very quickly. That is not. That's like got a lot of acidity in it. Well, I have to say I enjoy my wine, and uh, I enjoy drinking wine with a man who enjoys drinking wine too. And well, you have an extraordinary cellar here, so um, thank you for sharing that with me. And I have oh, to say you. that uh, I promise I won't drink anymore. Do you have a bottle?